Are you dealing with a complete coward? And if you are, is that such a bad thing? Weak people are treacherous. They are treacherous by definition because they are weak. Welcome to Pure Element 5. My name's Suzanne, and today's epiphany came from a random movie night. It's when you run away that you are most likely to stumble. This is part two of a two-part series. Please check out part one. By the end of this video, you'll learn 17 signs you're dealing with a coward. Or perhaps it's you that's the coward. Well, the fear stops here because we'll also provide you with strategies on how to move from fear-based to love-based decision-making. If you're on board with that, thank you. Please like and subscribe. And if you think anyone else would benefit from this information, please share the video. When a coward hurts your feelings, you might calmly express that to them and ask them to stop. A coward will then laugh at, dismiss, or ridicule your feelings. You're too sensitive. You're crazy. You're hysterical. You have no sense of humor. Calm down. The blame is no longer on them for misbehaving. Instead, the blame is on you for overreacting to their misbehavior. They argue about the argument. Every argument you have with a coward becomes a meta discussion about the argument itself rather than the point you are actually trying to make. They pull you into pointless fights, mincing words and debating semantics in order to put you on the defense. Instead of discussing your legitimate concerns, they comment on your tone and accuse you of doing things that they themselves are doing. Playing victim, gaslighting, projecting. The blame is no longer on them, it's now on you for the way that you approach the argument. They use guilt tripping and pity stories. If you're prone to feeling sympathetic towards them, chances are they'll go for this one a lot. If you point out something hurtful they've done, a coward will start talking about their abuse of childhood or their evil ex. And before you know it, you're comforting them, even though they hurt your feelings. After all, how can you be mad at someone when they open up to you about something so traumatic? <laughs> They hide behind the I'm not quite ready excuse. Cowards spend too much time getting ready, to be ready, to get ready, to almost get ready, to be ready to get ready. And they form a committee or task force, which is simply a committee on steroids, to evaluate more and look into the situation more so they can really be ready. Getting overly ready is a result of fear. Should you prepare? Yes, of course. Do your research, but don't hide behind the we aren't quite ready curtain. <laughs> Mental clutter keeps cowards from noticing. The more they fear, the more a coward will try to do. The more they try to do, the more they have to think about. The more meetings they have, the more calls they make, the more emails they read and send, the more commitments to obsess over. Once they actually let go of some of the fear, they can free up some of their time to do things that truly inspire and invigorate them. <laughs> They are massive drama queens. Cowards use drama to distract others from the fact that they need to step up, apologize, and take responsibility. Sympathy points are the coward's currency and they want to make you pay. They constantly blame others. Blaming someone else puts them in the position of victim, who is not in control. For the coward, this gets them off the hook, so they won't have to take action to change the circumstances, because now it's someone else's problem. They are closed-minded. Cowards can only see information that agrees with their beliefs. As long as they don't see other possibilities, they don't have to take action. So you're dealing with a complete coward. What can you do? When someone blame shifts, there's an understandable temptation to explain yourself, defend your name, and prove your point. However, the problem is that this is exactly what the coward wants you to do. They blame shift so you'll react. They often accuse you of doing things that they themselves are doing. Because it's so infuriating, you simply have to say something. And again, that's exactly the point. By sucking you into these arguments, they're consuming your energy and watching you progressively self-destruct so they can use your reaction to prove their own points. Wow, look how bitter and angry you are. If you're dealing with a coward, you can walk away. In fact, calmly stating that you are no longer interested in playing this game, taking your bat and ball and leaving is the most powerful thing you can do. If you are struggling with courage and decision making, here is a quick go-to that might help you. In fear-based decisions, you feel it in your head. It's an I better do this or else. Instead of making a decision and putting your time and energy into what you need to do, you tend to put all of your energy into worrying. When you worry and ruminate over and over about 
about, oh my God, what if I fail? You can become so afraid of failing that you end up doing nothing. You feel trapped, powerless, and hopeless to improve your situation, when in reality, not making a decision is also a decision. How would your life be better if you made decisions based on love and not fear? Love-based decisions are about going after what we want. Love-based decisions can often mean doing what's right, even when it's not popular. They're about knowing and believing that we are good enough. They are based on knowing and accepting that failing is not the end of the world. Making a love-based decision means we don't fear failure because we know it's part of life. More importantly, a vital part of success. Let's face it, decisions based on love, growth, and change, however you look at it, can be hard. We often pick easy over hard, even when what's in the hard column is what we really want. The next time you make a big decision, ask yourself, is this love or is it fear? Is this what I truly want or am I just keeping certain people happy? Am I doing what's in my heart or simply taking an easier option because I'm scared of the harder one? Choosing love over fear takes practice. It takes awareness, courage, strength, and persistence. It takes all of the things you already have and it will make this entire world a better place. You can rise above anything when you choose love over fear. If you thought this was pure engagement, please give us a thumbs up. And if you thought it was pure poo, feel free to give us a thumbs down. It helps us create the content you want to see. The links are down below if you want to catch us on other mediums, along with a link to our website so you can download our free ebook. Until we meet again, the essence of who you truly are is pure love. Go out and connect with someone and show them the love.